welcome to the very first Old Mutual Woo, Hero Conversation. And of course, this beautiful environment out here, huh? The studios upstairs, the facilities, the opportunity to just walk in here. Firstly, have you heard? Downstairs is open to the public all day for free. Young people have an opportunity to honestly live their dreams and learn from the greats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage the ever gorgeous, ah, oh, the queen herself, Mamle Tambulu. Another round of applause for the beautiful Mamle Tambulu. From one legend to another legend, the king herself, Tandi Swamazwai. Ta! The importance of longevity just as a career before we talk about money, planning ahead. How did you think about that when you started, right at the beginning, man? For me, it was do or die. I would want to call it, it was a calling. I didn't do it because I, was, I wanted to make money or glamour, even, that, even though those days there wasn't money for black artists. I was driven. I love to do this thing so much that um, no one could stop me, not even my mom. No one in the family could stop me. And so I did it without money because I was driven. Mm. Most of the art, well, I shouldn't say most, there are artists who come into the business and because they heard that Tandi Swamazai is the biggest thing that is happening today and I want to be like her. But you don't know what motivated her to, be, to want to be a singer. She did it because there was something that was driving her to be that artist that she is today. So my advice to, my first advice would be to young artists, think before you plunge in. Think about what you really want to do. Do you really want to sing because you feel this thing inside you? Or you do it because you can make money? There are those who are very lucky. They go and make money like that. And then they blow it because they think it's going to come tomorrow. But if you are driven, you don't do that. Yeah. You are driven to do it. Yeah. Money or no money. So I, I think my longevity comes from the fact that um, You've always loved it. I've always loved it. Yeah. And, I, and I didn't care. Yeah. I wanted to sing and it made me feel good. And it was when I came back home, when they told me that my, my, my mom Nani, who said, looked at me one time and said, then it began to make sense to yes. me. You know? yes. So I, I would advise young artists to, to really search, to really find out why they want to sing, why they want to dance, yeah. why they want to, to, to be stars. And I know? think if, you, if you're not doing it for the money, yeah. then you're able to sustain it. Exactly. Because you, you sing in spite of everything. Absolutely. And you sing whether there's an applause or, or not. not. You yes. sing on your own yes. in your house by yes. yourself. Yes. You know, I have there's this thing where people, if people don't see you in the press a lot, they ask you, Usatula. <laughs> <laughs> and my answer is always that I, I was singing before you knew I was singing. Exactly. And exactly. I'll be singing when I'm After. dying. Yes. I'll still yes. be singing. You know, somebody told me a really beautiful story about Brahu when he was, you know, passing away that he would lie there and he would just do this with his fingers. Mm. Because that's 
you go all the way with the music yes. if you love it. Yes. Then it takes yes. you with you. It go you go with it all the way. Yes, you really. And do. it's not about how much money you made or how mm -hmm. much applause mm -hmm. you got. Mm -hmm. It's got to be about mm -hmm. loving it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, um, Mama, I, you know, I've I've wanted to have this conversation with you for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, from when you first came back home. I've been holding on to your dress and saying, oh, Mamuleta, I love this song, I love this song. I, lo I, I mean, I know the entire discography. And what I actually think is that Mamuleta actually is probably one of the most prolific South African songwriters. They yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I can listen to Mamuleta's music the entire day you don't get, you don't run out of songs, number one, and you just don't find a bum song. All the songs are incredible. I, Boza, Zimkile, Makwalandini, Down by the River, <laughs> all of them, so many songs, so many songs. What is wrong with grooving? But that's actually a human, is, that was actually Brian Hughes' song, right? Which one that, is that? What is wrong with grooving? And then yes, he, re actually, he recorded yes, it. Yes, recorded I recorded it, it, yeah. He, he, actually, we were in San Francisco together. Uh -huh. And he, he came with this song, and I listened to it, and the words were like, <sighs> okay, am I gonna sing this song, really? <laughs> you know? I and love, he said, I know you do. I, I, I've always and loved that I was very, you know, cause I was very, you know, I was very straight. I'm a very straight person. Uh -huh. So, you know, when he came, I'm like, what's this wrong with grooving? Can't you go? Just, Just have, have a little, little happy. happy. I was like, oh, <laughs> I can't say these things in a way yeah. any hide. But anyway, um, I said, okay, I'll do it. I agree to do it. Actually, I, I always thought that that was such a revolutionary song, especially speaking about uh, black girls yes. and the ability yes. to yes. have joy. I actually wrote it around that time, you yes. know, when women were saying, we don't want to wear bras anymore. Yeah, we, we just want to be happy. <laughs> we just want to have a little happy. Yeah. Actually, when I, I went to go visit Mamleta the other day, she was speaking about um, the importance of the union. So I'll mm -hmm. let you talk about that. But for mm -hmm. me, I think what's always been important um, from the very beginning was to read my contracts. Uh, to have a lawyer to read my contracts. Mm -hmm. um, was this from the beginning? From the very beginning. I think, well, I, I think what I would, well, here's one thing. When we were jackknife, <laughs> we got chowed. We got chowed there. The we got truth chowed comes there. out. <laughs> yeah. We did get chowed there. I think from that song, I probably made about 3,000 rand <laughs> over the years. But who gave you the wake up call, though, that you know that you're actually being chowed? The person who gave us the wake-up call ended up being the guy who's also chowing us. <laughs> <laughs> so you've also got to be careful of people who are talking fast in this mm. industry because mm. everybody is talking. But um, so straight after that, we knew that you know we have to get lawyers and have you know somebody read our contracts, explain our contracts to us, and for us to know what we want out of that contract mm. is the most mm. important thing. But. The thing about this industry is that it's also, it, it, it falls towards the, the record companies. The record companies always make more money out of our creativity than we do. And that's why in this present day, a lot of young artists just do their stuff independently and then try and distribute it in some other way mm. because they can't afford to give up their masters or you know, give up so much of their percentage mm. of their mm. work mm. to someone else. So the contract is really important. And the other thing that's important is having a financial advisor. I've always had a financial advisor, always put my money away. Mm. Um, and having investments, you know what I mean? For me, that's the main, because our, our business is not, What's the word I'm looking for? Like we, you can't be sure mm. about what's going to happen. Mm. You can't say just because I had a hit this year, I'm no gonna be still. here 20 years from now. Mm. Nobody knows mm. that. Mm. There's a lot of great, incredible artists who are sitting at home with no work mm. whatsoever. So it's not even about how talented you are mm. because that's not the thing. Mm. Um, but so when you do get that chance to make some money, you have to plan for it. Yes, you in, have in a, to. You know, have to plan for it, yeah. You have to. But you were talking to us about the um, about being in the U.S. and how yeah. the union 
was actually quite an important part of how you yeah. navigated yeah. the business yeah. well, and protected you a lot. Yeah, um, I, I, it's something that I've always wished that in South Africa we, we, we develop, you know, uh, because, uh, for instance, when I arrived at the airport, there was already an agent that mm. said to me, you know, you cannot come and play here in any club mm. without you signing this piece of paper that says you are a member of the union. Mm -hmm. So from the airport, I was driven straight to the office of the agent, and I was told this is this is the form that you sign, and I read it, and I was given a card, now you remember, and you have to pay dues every, every month, you know? And that's how I learned. But as time went on, I was able to realize how important this union was. Yeah. Uh, because it protects you, the artist, uh, from, from producers, you know, mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, it protects also the producer from you. Yeah. You know, if you don't come to the show on time or you don't show up at all, you pay a fee as an artist. Mm -hmm. And also there's another aspect which I very much like. The musicians, if you're a musician that plays a, a, an instrument, there's a, 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 um, a, a, I'd say like, let me make an example with Old Mutual. Oh, no, no, let me say an example with Yamaha. Yamaha would say, since it's a group of you who want to buy instruments, mm -hmm. I know that I can make a mint from you, but you will get the instrument that you want and I'll, you'll pay only 1% mm -hmm. you know, interest. So they were able to buy a lot of instruments and they were able to supply instruments I mean, to a right lot now, of artists. And a lot we of don't know. That. don't have instruments. They don't. They can't afford the very instrument they play. Exactly. And also when you travel to another country to perform, there's a contract that you take with you from your union, and your union says, this artist needs X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So it didn't matter where you go, you are protected. You were always protected by the yeah. union. And this and is good because it covers the small artists, so that even if, you know, you don't have to be, for instance, casper in your vest to get you know, addressing it it, it, it it protects everyone. Yeah. You know, even yeah. the big artists still have, you know, they still have to be members of the union. And also another thing that is good about the union is that when you go to a record company, they want to see your contract. Yeah. You take it to the union, they read it, and they say, this is not the percentage that the union wants for this artist. Yeah. And they make sure that your percentage that you're supposed to get, you get. Yes. You know, and... Um, even when, you, like, like, like I said earlier, when you're performing in a club or in a theater, they make sure that the stage is right, the lights are right, and you, nothing will safety, fall on you. Yeah, if, yeah that's a security, yeah. safety and security. All those aspects are in place. You know, so union is very, very important. And nobody can rip you off when you have a union to protect. So why, why do you think it's so difficult for us here in South Africa to establish a union. I know there's been some unions established, mm. and then you know sometimes it's and 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 there's quite a few of them. Yeah. Do you think it's important to just have one or many or? No, I mean, the, 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 it, well, in in many countries, you you have a union for the actors, you have a mm -hmm. union for the performers, yeah, and uh, you have a union for visual arts. You know, people who are, who are into painting and all that. So they are different. Yes. But, to, you know, I'm talking about the union that protects us, the yes. performing artists, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we need it here. We have a lot of performing artists in South Africa mm. and very good ones. Uh, we need to do something about that. It's very important. Yeah. yeah. I, I, the thing is, I, I had a child and I thought to myself, I want this child to grow up in a home where it's her house and she can stay <clears> in it her whole life and say, I grew up, this was my room when I was a kid, this is still my room, I went to that school, I went to that shop, I played at that park. It was really important to me. Um, so I wasn't actually thinking about the investment part of it at that time. I was just thinking about the fact that I wanted to create a home for my child. Mm -hmm. So sometimes having a responsibility does help you to get your ducks in a row. <laughs> I'm not saying have children because that's another responsibility, guys. <laughs> you must be careful with that one. Um, yeah, but I think I had always been told that it's really important to buy a house and that it's not so important to buy a car. 
So I always bought tiny little cars, and then I invested my money in a house because I thought that's the thing that's important. I mean, mm. recently, well, not recently, about four or five years ago, I bought myself a fancy car. But it took me about a year to make that financial decision. Not just because of the money aspect of it, but also like the, um, I guess the cultural aspect. I grew up at a time when we didn't show off to other kids about what we had because we knew that we were all suffering. So it wasn't cool to be like, and then we are not you Mercedes. You know, so I, I just kind of really felt like I was betraying something I fundamentally believed in when I bought myself a fancy car. Not only the idea of like spending on something that isn't really an asset, but also spending on something that would ultimately separate me from what I felt mm. was my community, this, these suffering masses. I felt like, how am I gonna drive back into Soweto in this obnoxious fancy car? But then after a while I, thought, I figured that I worked for this money I worked really hard for it, and so I didn't steal it from anyone. I never took some government job that was stealing somebody's pension money from somewhere. You know, I just worked. Yes. No, but it's the truth. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but I was, you know, this was the, this is work that I had worked for, and so I could take this thing. I was lucky to have a manager in the state, a black guy, John Levy, who actually advised us to say, you know, you're, you're making some money, but make sure that some of that money you buy property. Yeah. And, and, and of course I kept bugging him, saying, you know, I wanna go home, I wanna go home. And he said, but you can't go home penniless. You know, most of the money you're spending it here, doing this, the kids going to school and all that. Make sure that you buy property. Yeah. So that when you're ready to go home, you can sell this house and take the money and go home and buy a house. I think I was going to make the point that this past week was the first time I went to Mamleta's house. And um, there was something so comforting to me to see her in her space comfortable. Like, comfortable. <laughs> okay, guys? It's not... Uh -uh. No, guys, we are comfortable. <laughs> And I said to her, I said to her, I'm really looking forward. To, when I see you, I see my future. I see that, you know, I'll be in my 70s comfortable, yeah. like this. Yeah. Just like this. I want to be comfortable like this, you know? Um, Those goals are so important. These are goals. Oh. This is goals, you know, because yeah. also, like I was saying, in this, in, in this industry, you never know how long it's going to go, yeah. you know? Mm. So to see someone carry this with such dignity and with such grace and then land here just comfortable i like it <laughs> i really do i really do Mamela. i was so you know kind of you know inspired by that the way we do things his mind is mine and mine is his we discuss everything you know, uh, it's just lately now where he decided that, you know what, I just want to buy a shirt. I don't have to tell her, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but all along we've been discussing everything, you know, especially when we're dealing with, like, heavy money. We make sure that we talk about it and we come up with very good reasons why we want to spend this money, you know. And it's very, very important because you have to remember we have kids. And, uh, you know, we can spend all we want, but we have to remember they have a future. And we have to make sure that we, we leave them something, you know. Yeah. Um, our parents didn't leave us anything, and not because of their own doing. Uh, but, you know, now we take over. Let's make sure that our kids are comfortable. We want them to continue this comfort that we have enjoyed. But also, um, when I came to your house, because I, I've been there, guys, I've been there. Comfortable, <laughs> comfortable. <laughs> um, I mean, I didn't get to go into your wardrobe, so I didn't see whether you had Gucci bags or not. But I what don't. I did see was that you had invested in a lot of art. Yes. And I think that that's a great investment because that's something that, you know, it gains value over time. Yes, it does. You know, mm. there's Dumile Feni, there's this, there's, I mean, mm. the house is incredible. Mm. Um, so I think it's also about that, right? About investing in buying things that add value. Yes, absolutely. To, to your world and not necessarily just consuming. Yeah. Well, also, for... you know, it's, it's about 
yeah, um, encouraging young artists to to see that we enjoy what they do, their work, we enjoy their paintings. And yeah. I love art in my house, I really do. Um, especially if it's, most of, most of it, it's from young people, you know, and, uh, and, and I like to encourage that. Yeah. Yeah, I like to encourage that. I, I'm, I'm not one that gives children money to go and spend. I don't do that. Um, unless, of course, we just want to be frivolous and go when we're going out. But I don't teach my children, you must know this is a dollar, this is a run, this is, I don't do that. And they see the way we do things in the house, you know. They see when we go to the supermarket, we take them, they say, Mama, we don't have bread, okay, we don't have money today. But maybe in the afternoon, we'll get some money to buy bread. So they understand the dynamics of living in a home. You know, and, and they don't demand because they don't, they see that we don't demand from each other. Yes. You know, it's all about all living together. And when I run out of money, because I do sometimes. I was about to ask to, you that. Yes, like, I do. What do you do with the broke years? You know, when, because there's got to be some broke yeah, years. Yes, you know, and then they'll come to me and say, Ma, you know, I have a... a Ten rand in my piggy bank. Why don't we take that and go and buy something? Mm -hmm. But they see that happening in the house. They see the sharing in the house. Yes. So I don't just sit them down and say, learn about the dollar, learn about that. But I think that time will come because they hear us talk about, I'm going to the bank, I'm going to do this. I have yeah. to pay, you know, da 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 transactions. Maybe that's so the they learn that way. Maybe that's the information that some young artists need to kind of hear mm. is that, um, even with an incredible career such as yours, you've gone through periods where oh, you've been broke. Listen. So it's not, it's, it's not like you went to America, you got famous, you got no. rich, it was nice, you know now, what I mean? No, listen, I have stories to tell about that. Yeah. I, yo, yo, yo. Tell me one of them, just yeah, tell, tell me you. one of them. You know, I remember when we, we started to, to, we wanted to come with a record company. Mm -hmm in the States, and there, there were a lot of people who wanted to put money behind it. It was called Chisa, by the way. Yes. And things started to roll, you know, money was coming in, you know, yeah, 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 we're gonna start this company, the Crusaders were gonna be involved, and all that, 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 that. Of course, money, when it starts to roll in, people start to say, well, nah, it's too many, you know, I, I need this for myself, I need that mm. for myself. And there was a little problem with that. And I woke up one morning and I said to, to, to Kaifas, you know what, I think we need to move out. Because we're living in this nice apartment that was given to us, finished, you know, because mm -hmm. we were running a company. And he looked at me, he said, what do you mean we should leave? I said, yes, I think we should. Let's go and find ourselves an apartment. That we can afford. Yes, that we can afford, that we can probably slowly finish. He looked at me like, are you out of your mind? In America, we don't know anybody. We're the only two people here except for you, Cizenzi and Jonas and a few other people. I said, no, let's go. You know, so I said, okay, I'll tell you what. In the morning, let's take a taxi and look in the paper, go to like Wilshire district and see if we can find an apartment. Uh, two days later, we found an apartment and we moved in. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a money, and, but I had a promise from people at Watts who wanted me to come and perform in their festival. I said, let's try this. And while I was there performing, John Levy, who became my manager later, mm -hmm. saw, us, saw, us, saw me there. And he said, you're not There's so bad. There. You're not bad, <laughs> you know? And OK, I worked with him. Um, but before that, we were in this little apartment watching television, a small little television that was that was lent to us by a neighbor, mm -hmm. you know, in the same building, apartment building. And we were watching a commercial of hot dogs uh -huh. and hamburgers. And you were just hungry. And we were sitting the there <laughs> with, <laughs> with nothing to eat. Yes. And it was really tough, yeah. very, very tough, yeah. you know. And uh, in the evening, John called and said, you know, I, I just spoke to some people and they saw your show and they liked you and I think I would like to manage you. 
I said, yeah, you want to manage it, but I'm broke. I have, we have no food in there. He said, I'm coming. I'll drive and bring, bring some yeah. food. But it happened. You yes. Know? Yeah, it happened. And then you have to deal with the idea of being famous, but broke. broke. Yes, yes. Oh, you know many I mean? times, yeah. many times. Sometimes we owe the apartment, we didn't have money, and, and we couldn't even get money to take a bus, you know. So it was yeah. very difficult. I mean, I started making money when I was young. So I didn't really know what money was. You know? mm. And then I had a child and I had this little broke moment. And I knew that 100 rand can buy me food for this week. Mm -hmm. 100 rand, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you, get, you just get a real sense of what the money is exactly. and what it can actually do. Yeah. And I think being broke taught me that I needed to have savings. Yeah. I needed to have very big savings. <laughs> like, guys, my yeah. savings are like this. Because I don't want to see that. I don't, wanna, I don't want to see that. I want that my savings must help me through at least a year of mm. suffering. Mm. And then after, if I can't sort myself out in a, in mm. a year, then I, it must be my destiny. Mm. <laughs> you, know? you know, but mm. savings... It's that very important. It to save. It's I very, have a very feeling important. though, somebody in this room has no idea what we're talking about. Broke? Because I can only imagine, like, the day he said. Yeah, some people think that when we talk about broke, out. you mean broke like. Oh my love. <laughs> <burn out. laughs> oh my love. You see, oh, oh, Oprah Hot Sticks will never get broke because no. that song keeps paying Come him back. <laughs> A warm welcome to Every the day, amazing Kutsi Paul Hot Sticks Mabuse. Yeah. And the ever giving me the bad information legendary Yvonne Mam Chaka Chaka. Yeah. Uh, talking about this letter and Tandisa. Maybe let me speak about CC. Uh, I think in a way I was privileged to have met them in, in LA. I went to their house, I think probably after they were broke. <laughs> 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 I went to their home when they were already rich. <laughs> no, 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 they rich is not the word. <laughs> for the first time, for the first time, I went to a black home that had a swimming pool. Comfortable. Yes, cozy, baby. I mean, comfortable. I mean, comfortable. Tanisha just said it exactly how it was. There I was in Los, Los Angeles, my friend. When I get there, they have a little son called Mosese. There's a big swimming pool. <laughs> I have to teach him how to swim. <laughs> and he says to me, I didn't know that people in South Africa can swim. Cozy. I mean, I was introduced to things that I never imagined. You know, Brad Kaifas used to take me to this Thai restaurant. I said, Brad Kaifas, what is Thai? <laughs> he says, it's Thai food, Sipo. You know, I mean, I was exposed to these things. And I mean, it was the first trip for me in the US and I was like, hey, yeah, I thought I was going to see Earth, Wind and Fire and all those guys, but meeting Kaifos and Sislet in the US <laughs> was the best thing that ever happened to me. That's all you needed. That's the best Thank thing. You, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Man. I just want to say this is such a great space. Nice, young people in the arts. We thank those who thought about us and wanted to do this. We really want to thank them. I'm just, I'm just one of those lucky musicians because when I was actually found by mistake and uh, investment has really what has kept me going, I must say. Mm -hmm. At 21, I had one million rents in my account. All right. Comfortable. Comfortable. Thank you to a white man called Phil Hollis. I hated him at first. Phil will come and say, gee whiz, Brenda has made so much money. We only have a check for 400,000. Brenda has got a check for 1 million, but I'm giving you 100,000 rents. We're banking the other one, we're investing. I hated him. 
but I love him today. Mm. I love him today because even though he was ripping me off, he banged the money for me. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, I was not one of those artists who wanted to, to buy clothes and cars and things. And um, if you invest your money, guys, because you know, money comes and goes, you must be very yeah. respectful yeah. of it. So we don't have good managers in South Africa, unfortunately. No. We do not have good uh, uh, agents in South Africa. There's few of them who will be, you know, looking out for artists, but uh, some don't. So, you know, money comes and it goes. Yes. So when you have it, don't say tomorrow will cater for itself because it may just not. Mm. But I want to say, my husband's money, it's mine. My but husband's your money, money is, is mine. Yours. My money is <laughs> <It's> mine. mine. <laughs> yeah. Show some love for the legendary Mummy Von Chaga Chaga. Whew. Okay, that was nice. Tandiswa, Sondela. But I like the fact that I can just say, King Ta. Yes, Queen Ta. <laughs> Do your thing, my Queen. So um, we're going to do uh, two of Mamleta's songs today. Um, it was very difficult to choose, obviously. But we settled on these ones. Jesus. 
I grew up at a time when Mamleta and Tatu Kaifas and Mamu Miriam Makeba, Dorothy Masuku, Dolira Tebe, these were the names that I looked up to. These were the names that taught me that when you make music, your music should have a social comment. It should have something that gives back to your people. These are the people whose shoulders we stand on. They are our arsenal as singers. We know because they have been, we know that we can. And their music reminds us that it brings us back home. You know, there's so, I mean, in, these, in this day and age, you almost feel like some of our music is dying. Some of our music is disappearing. But every time I listen to their music, it reminds me of who I am. It centers me, it's my compass. It takes me, brings me back home. So I'm really thankful to the kind of musicians that they are for molding us and showing us what we can be. Yeah. So this is, I would like to dedicate the song today to Mamleta because, precisely because of that. Because when I listened to Not Yet to Huru, I knew that I had to speak as well as a young person. If you take my hand 